But first, it was the armed hold-up that went wrong, a gunman firing a warning shot to scare his victims. But that shot changed David Snow's life forever. He's now an amputee, struggling to make ends meet, and feels the system has failed him. Patrick Major reports. All of a sudden, the burning started, and then I looked down and seen the blood, and I thought, hell, this isn't good. It was a life-altering event which David Snow is reminded of constantly. There's times where I wake up and I can't even breathe because I've lived it all again. It should have been like any other day at work, but David became embroiled in an armed hold-up at his Theberton workplace back in 2013. These four guys walked in, two with balaclavas, two with hoodies pulled up and had their hoodies tied around their face. Um, one had a shotgun in his hand. The armed bandit let off a warning shot. David was unlucky enough to be in the firing line. The shotgun hit the ground, so it took up concrete, bits of steel, everything, and all just went into my lower leg. David sustained a serious injury from the impact. He recovered in hospital, but continued to experience daily pain. When they started doing the physio, that's when I noticed something was wrong. Three years on from the accident, doctors delivered some bad news. So when they said, well, look, the only way to give you any quality of life now is to, you know, take the leg off, take the lower part of your leg off. So I just said, oh, well, if that's the only way it's going to happen, well, it's going to happen. David did receive financial support from Return to Work SA, but forced to give up his job, he's struggling financially and he's ineligible for ongoing financial support. When it comes to they cut my leg off, Workcover then said, no, you can't have another assessment done. In light of David's worsening health condition, lawyer Amber Sprague says the 2015 overhaul of workplace compensation has disadvantaged many. If someone has subsequent surgeries, the likelihood is they don't any longer have any entitlement to compensation for that surgery. So uh, it can certainly negatively affect and, and financially um, affect the amount that someone might be entitled to. And these days it's not just his leg he's worried about. David continues to suffer from debilitating post-traumatic stress disorder. Even a car backfiring in the street was enough to put, you know, get the hair standing up on my back. Given the circumstances, Amber Sprague says it's unfortunate David wasn't able to claim compensation for his PTSD. There is no lump sum payable for psychological injury at all. For some reason, the government of this state continue to supposedly acknowledge psychological injury as real, but then fail to accept that it can possibly cause permanent impairment. We certainly need to get, I think, even more broadly, more understanding that mental health is just as fragile and just as important as physical health. Dignity Party MP Kelly Vincent says she'd like to see more leeway for workplace injury victims. If their injury is impacting the way they go about their lives, if their support needs have changed, absolutely they need to be recognised. With little chance of returning to work, David is trying to claim on his life insurance. He has to pay $1,400 for an assessment to try and qualify for a total and permanent disability. The good thing I suppose about um, total and permanent disablement claims is that they can incorporate anything that is going on in, in a worker's life, so it can be non-work related issues as well as work related issues. Who's going to want to hire a guy that's just getting used to a prosthetic that's 50 years of age and can't guarantee he's going to be at work every day anyway? That's right, nothing to smile about there.